don't know where Tiger Woods lands for you. I, my family didn't have money. We didn't golf. I didn't know a lot of golfers. Uh, I didn't watch a lot of golf uh, growing up. And then there was Tiger Woods. And I, Tiger Woods felt like yeah. us. And he looked like an athlete. And he made it cool. And I had certain shirts I liked to wear when I golfed. And he had muscles and stuff. And he was sort of alpha. And so yesterday, I'm not going to lie, it made me sick to my stomach. I, I, I was literally like, oh, no, 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 don't do this. How did it land for you? I, I refused to process it yesterday. And then this morning when I did, because I was about to go on the air, I am not ashamed to say it. I almost cried. I Listen. I'm incredibly grateful that he's alive and it looks like he's going to be able to, you know, recover as a human being. But selfishly, as a sports fan, Tiger Woods is one of the two most important athletes of my lifetime. He's one of my two favorite athletes of my life. And I said this this morning, a, a lot of my life benchmarks, you don't know this about me, Colin, but like I measure them with Tiger's career. Like, one of the most memorable conversations I ever had with my grandfather, who passed away almost 20 years ago now, was in 96, he called me and said, Nikki, get to a television. There's a young man playing golf that's going to change the sport. That was when he was going to win his third amateur. And I watched that. I was 11 years old. And from that moment, I was hooked like a drug. And from 96 to when he won his 14th major, the U.S. Open, in a playoff with the broken leg. Colin, he was one of the only constants in my life. My parents got divorced. I had falling outs and then reun reunited with family. I moved. I went to college. I, and it was Tiger. It was only Tiger. My, my team stunk. The Chiefs and the Royals <laughs> stunk. It was Tiger. And then he was gone like this. I signed up for Twitter, Colin, to talk about, I looked it up this morning, his first car accident, the one in 09. And then, like a, a godsend, I, a decade later, I'm watching the Masters with my four-year-old at the time daughter, Deanna, five-year-old at the time, and we watched him together, and now she's hooked. Yeah. And she wants lessons. And she asks me about when's Tiger gonna play. And so it's heartbreaking that I think we're never gonna get to see him play again, but I am so thankful because there's never been an athlete like him in my lifetime. And I, the, the memories he gave us as a country are unlike any athlete I can remember. Yeah, you know, I've said this before on the air, and Joey's been here. It, about once or twice a year, I'll just go, you know, fishing on YouTube. <laughs> and I invariably end up with either my favorite comedians or watching Tiger Woods' greatest moments. And they're just, you it's cannot, unbelievable. It's, it's incredible hitting 270 yards out of, you know, foot high grass. It's hard. And I, I tell people this all the time. It's hard to explain to young people what boxing was like in the seventies and eighties, where I was watching a cartoon show Correct. as a kid in Seattle called JP patches, a cartoon show, a clown show. And they interrupted to tell me that Ollie beat Foreman and Zaire. That's how big boxing was. <laughs> 50 years from now, you will tell people, there's a guy named Tiger Woods. And literally, you waited all weekend to watch Sunday. And you're like, golf? You're like, no, no, no. No, it was like, it was like an NFL player Colin, playing golf. And, it's, and the other thing is, and this is where life is, I don't know, fair, unfair, tragic. I, he was not only unbeatable, but seemingly immortal. Yeah. For a decade. And the decade since, he's been nothing but mortal. Right. And it's almost like as per... And, and you... HBO had that documentary, and it was a good... It did the off-the-course stuff, but it was a good reminder of how insane the run was. Yeah. It was just... He was a favorite against the field, major <laughs> after major <laughs> after major... And we, it, it, I understand he, he's not going to get Jack's record now. No one can convince me ever anyone ever played that sport at a higher level than he did. Well, you watch majors today, and people win by a stroke, and it's thrilling. He was winning majors by, like, 12 strokes. And, I mean, guys in the majors it were like Phil Mickelson in their prime. He was winning by 12, yeah. 12 strokes. All right, it's so the story that won't go away appears to have an ending. Jeff Darlington, legitimate reporter, said today 
Dak's going to get a franchise tag. It is essentially a lease. Players have agreed to it. They hate it. But you get it paid enormous sums of money for a year. And your takeaway on this is what? I don't understand why the Cowboys are insistent on doing business poorly. They pay the wrong guys and don't pay the right guy. You give Zeke, what, six years, 90 million at the most fungible position on the field, and now you are, to me, this guarantee, if they franchise him, it guarantees he pl either he plays elsewhere in 2022 or they have to give him an impossible to manage contract because I know they say, oh, you can franchise a guy three times. No, you can't because the third time you have to pay him 140% of what you paid him <laughs> the most recent year. Yeah. So this will be the last year they have Dak Prescott on anything close to a reasonable deal. And by the way, reasonable this year under the franchise tag becomes the highest paid quarterback in the league. I, they should take advantage of the fact that every other team in that division has no idea what they're doing at quarterback. <laughs> Washington doesn't have a quarterback yet. Daniel, Daniel Jones is the most fumblingest player I've ever seen. And the Eagles just traded away Carson Wentz. You can have the best quarterback in this division for the next five years. Is Dak perfect? No. Have I been hot and cold on him? Yes. But is he clearly one of those guys that you can win with? Absolutely. Is he a great intangible guy? Absolutely. And the fact that they are potentially going to play this game again is bananas to me. Yeah. So Zion Williamson, I don't recall what you thought about Zion. Mm -hmm. I, I fell in love with his personality and his self-awareness early, early. And, you know, anybody that's different, whether it's Kyler Murray or Zion, physically different. And I, I'm, I'm like this, too. I struggle to figure out how it's going to work. Right. And like Zion, though, I, I said yep. that I said this from the beginning. If he can shoot free throws well, he's Carl Malone, but more explosive. He's going to initiate so much contact. He's just going to live at the free throw line. And that's exactly what has happened. He'll never be a great jump shooter. Uh, maybe he'll never be a great passer. He just, he literally could not walk from the end of the bench to the front of it without hitting something. He's just contact and big and yeah. thick and bounces. And he's going to live at the free throw line. So, yeah. that, and so I am overjoyed that he's the fourth youngest guy to make an all-star team. What did you think he would be? And his, he surpassed your expectations. I don't know if he surpassed them, but it's because you and I both got a lot of flack when he was at Duke. I was on the same page. When he was at Duke, he was a top 25 player in the NBA. He just wasn't in the NBA yet. People are like, oh, my God, that's saying Alabama can beat the Jags. No, it's not. <laughs> it's saying a guy who is a freak athlete will continue to be a freak athlete. And so here's the thing. And this is not an insult. Zion Williamson is not yet a great basketball player. He is living off instincts and athleticism. He, he one day will be a superb defender. He's not yet. He one day will have more of an intermediate game. He doesn't have that yet. Despite that, he gives you 25 a night on 60% because <laughs> no one can stop him. And so, I, yeah, I mean, this was, to me, when they were talking about should the Pel you know, if the Knicks get the number one pick, remember, should they trade? No, you don't trade it. Like, this guy is going to win him an MVP one day. And that's very, very hard to do. A lot of great players go their whole career and never do. Zion will. And so I'm glad he's an all-star, and I'm glad you enjoy correctly we're not earlier on the all-star thing saying just bemoaning Devin Booker's lack of inclusion because the guy who would be taken out would either be Chris Paul, who's more important, or Zion. And Zion's got to be there. Zion's been spectacular, even though the Pelicans haven't been. So you and I are on the same page on him. By the way, I, I got to circle back to football. Tom Brady's going to be like 44 in August. You know he's going to sign an yeah, extension? He is. He's going to sign an extension. Yeah, I know. That's... An extension. Uh-huh. What, what, <laughs> it's not even a question. You're just taunting me. You know what? You're just trying to end this 
on a sour note because Tom Brady won't leave my life. Because uh, Tom Brady is just uh, just Jason in a number seven, number 12 jersey. So that's fine. So instead, I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to end on a very bright note, and I'm not going to talk about Tom Brady at all. I want to tell you something about your co-host, the incomparable Joy Taylor, and I want to tell America something about her. I know America. You know Joy Taylor for her hot takes on this show yeah. and those just fiery Twitter fingers that she fires out at people. What you do not know about Joy Taylor is the softer side of Joy Taylor. My family, we lost our dog of 16 years recently, and my wife took it very, very hard. Sure. Arrived at our doorstep was a gold personalized bracelet with our dog's name on it from Joy to my wife. That is the type of incredibly kind person you are working with. Now, par for the course, I got nothing, not even a text. But my <laughs> wife got a beautiful piece of jewelry. And so, Joy, it was incredibly nice of you. It, that is the person she is, no matter how mean she is to you simps on Twitter. <laughs> Colin, Joy, I will talk to you guys later. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Uh, Nick